Hello everyone, a very happy new year to all of you. I hope you have a very peaceful and prosperous new year. On that note, let's begin our new years with something productive and that is the current affairs because that is the only productive thing that I have to offer to you, all of you. So let's begin. Uh, I hope you all are aware of the live classes as well as our mobile application. Okay. So let's begin with the question number one. Which state government is implementing Project Lion in collaboration with the Central Zoo Authority? So here guys, Gujarat government is the right answer. So what has happened that Lion at 47, vision for the Amrit Kal has been prepared by the Ministry of Environment for the conservation of Asiatic lions in Gujarat. And I hope all of you are aware that Asiatic lions are found in good number in Gujarat. Okay. So Gir National Park is also there in Gujarat. So the Gujarat government uh, is going to collaborate with the Ministry of Environment for the lion at 47, vision for the Amrita. And this project is basically for the conservation of lions. Okay. Project Tiger is also being implemented. Uh, in the tiger landscapes uh, across 53 tiger reserves in India. Okay, apart from this, we have certain uh, animal protection initiatives. First is this project tiger, which was initiated in 1973. Another one is project elephant. Uh, and this project elephant is being run from 1991 to 1992. And here we have the project cheetah. The year of launch of this project cheetah can be set uh, as 2022 because in 2022 only the eight cheetahs were relocated into Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. However, the talks of relocation of cheetahs in India was going on way beyond than 2022 but it is the fact that in 2022 these cheetahs came in India. Can you tell me from which country were these cheetahs brought in India? This is your question and I hope all of you my students would be able to answer this. Okay, so <coughs> uh, already the pro project line is being implemented by the Gujarat government in collaboration with the Central Zoo Authority and this much financial assistance, the financial assistance of rupees 124 lakhs have been provided to the state of Gujarat for the conservation of wildlife including the Asiatic lions under the centrally sponsored scheme which is the development of wildlife habitats during the last three years. And this statement, guys, is completely useless for all of you to remember, okay? So you don't need to remember this statement, the financial assistance and whatever is being done uh, regarding this. However, you need to remember that there is Project Lion, which the Central Zoo Authority is implementing along with the Gujarat government. And now we are focusing on the Lion at 47 vision for the Amrit Kal mission. Okay, so the next question is, recently a total of 10 captive bred Asian giant tortoises have been released into uh, Natangi National Park. Where is the park located? So the park is located in Nagaland. Okay, the news is very simple that 10 uh, Asian giant tortoises have been released into this national park, which is Natangi Ka National Park, which is located in Nagaland. That's the basic news. Now, the, there is a reason I did not put the picture of these tortoises in this slide. Uh, I was planning to do so, but when I looked at the picture, I did not have the courage to put the, those tortoises, which do not look that pretty, okay? So, but the news is this much only, okay? You just need to focus on this thing that Asian giant tortoises have been introduced into this national park in Nagaland. And uh, these giant tortoises are critically endangered because uh, of the anthropogenic activities, the human activities in the environment. But at the same time, their conservation is very important for the ecology. Okay, that is why they have been categorized as the critically endangered species on the International Union for Conservation of nat uh, Nature's uh, Red List. Okay, Red List of Threatened Species. Now, this Nagaland Zoological Park in Dimapur has the highest number of Asian giant tortoises uh, and that much is enough for your preparation. Just know this thing and these numbers are just for your broader information, not for the memorization purpose. You just need to remember that the 
Nagaland Zoological Park, which is located in Dimapur, is uh, having the highest population of the Asian giant tortoises. That much is enough. Next question is, which ministry is organizing the Urban 20 event during the India's G20 presidency from this date, that is December 1st, 2022 to November 30, 2023. So here, Urban say, you can remember that it is the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, okay? So I would consider this question as a very easy question for all of you. Now, what is this Urban 20? This Urban 20 is basically a platform for the G20 countries and their observer or dialogue partners to come together and discuss the problems in the urban areas, the rising problems of the urban areas because in India also we are going to see a surge in the urban cities. Many semi-urban suburbs are converting into the modern urban areas. Okay, So, even rural areas are also being uh, converted into urban area. So there is a really high need that we need to strategize and plan the uh, change of those areas which are converting from rural area to urban area. Okay. And at the same time, uh, this urban 20 platform is going to offer cities from the G20 countries to discuss the important issues of urban development, including climate change, social inclusion, sustainable mobility, affordable housing, and financing of urban infrastructure. So as I told you, all the problems which are faced by the urban cities and which will be there if more and more urban cities are, uh, uh, when more and more urban cities come up without planning, okay? Now, one more thing is important that Ahmedabad has been given the responsibility to host this Urban 20 cycle, okay? And here you can clearly see that Ahmedabad is a UNESCO World Heritage City. And India has four World Heritage Cities. First is Ahmedabad, then Jaipur, Gwalior, and Orcha. So do remember this fact. Question number four is, which article of the Indian Constitution gives special statuses to states other than Jammu and Kashmir? So here, option A, Article 371 is the right answer. Article 370 was for the Jammu and Kashmir area. Now, 371 is for these other states, okay? However, the uh, you can say the special treatment which was given to Jammu and Kashmir is not given to any other state in India in Article 371, but there are certain provisions which have been given, okay? Now, why are we discussing this? First of all, this is not a polity class and you are not a UPSC candidate then why are we discussing it? So the reason is that recently Manipur has upgraded its inner line permit system portal. And this inner line permit system is basically a specific system for a certain number of states. Okay, so what happens that in Manipur, for example, if we as a resident of Delhi or Maharashtra or Gujarat, if we want to visit Manipur, we need to obtain this inner line permit for certain areas, okay? We are not permitted to uh, roam freely in the state of Manipur. We need to obtain this inner line permit from the government of Manipur. So this is the visa kind of a thing within our own borders. So that is the thing and it has been given to specific states, okay? So because of which I decided to put the Article 371 and the inner line permit system in the knowledge nuggets of this news. So here we have the list of states and this is not the exhaustive list. Now this is also the list and when you compile this list and this list, now it is the exhaustive list of states which have the special provisions under article 371. Okay, now I know that you have a question whether you need to remember this much data as well. So my answer is no, no need to remember the specific articles, okay, specific clauses and articles like 371C, 371D, no, no need to remember this. At the max, if you can remember the names of the states which have been given special statuses in India, that would be uh, enough for your preparation, okay. And in case, if you are a resident of any of these states, then please try to remember the specific article. And if you are not a resident of these states, then you need not to remember the articles. And broadly, I have already told you that if you can remember the names of the states, okay? So here we have Nagaland, Assam, Manipur, uh, which are the northeastern states, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, Maharashtra and Gujarat, okay? 
<coughs> then we have Sikkim, Mizoram, again Ar Arunachal Pradesh, I guess, is repeated. Goa and Karnataka are the states which have been given the special statuses. And inner line permit system is there in Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, Nagaland, Manipur, and Lakshadweep. So four of these states are the northeastern states, and one is this islands a nation, a state of India. Okay, and this is the map of India, which will help you in remembering the uh, inner line permit system of India. Okay, so at the maps you can just remember the inner line system permit requirements of the states in India. Okay. So the next question is how much is the MSP for the ball copra in 2023 season? So it is 11,750 per quintal. Okay. So MSPs, if they are announced recently and you have your examination coming up in a recent month, then it is important for you to remember the MSP amount for a specific crop. In case you have your examination two to three months after, then you don't need to remember it as of now. Okay. So ball copra is 11,750 per quintal and milling copra is 10,860. Now what is copra? For those who don't know, this is copra. Okay. The Nariel Gola. Okay, so this is the copra. Next question is with which country has India started its new Veer Guardian exercise? Now, first of all, let me tell you that it is an Air Force exercise. And I had already highlighted this fact that India conducts Air Force exercise only with a few selected countries. And now Japan has entered into that group of few countries. Okay. So... Veer Guardian exercise is going to be organized from January 16 to 26 next year, 2023. Okay, it's not the next year. It is the current year. Okay, so I'm not able to come out of the 2022 zone as of now. It is going to take some time, but I will surely enter into 2023. So it is the first ever air exercise Veer Guardian with Japan. Okay, and apart from this, nothing much is important. Uh, just that remember that it is going to take place at this area, okay, Japan's uh, Hayakuri Air Base and Iruma Air Base in Japan. So Japan is the location of Veer Guardian 2023 exercise. And here you can clearly see the islands of Japan. There are different islands of Japan and uh, the highlighted ones are the most important islands. I hope you are aware of the fact and you remember that Japan is an archipelago of 4,000 small islands and all the colored ones are the most important islands of Japan, okay? <coughs> so now guys, your task is to tell me that on which island is the Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Nagasaki city located? Question number seven is recently NTPC Limited and GE Power uh, India Limited signed an MOU to demonstrate technologies to reduce the carbon footprint of NTPC's existing coal-fired power plants. NTPC is India's largest utility. Uh, who is the chairman and managing director of NTPC? So, who is the chairman and managing director, guys? Uh, it is Krishnendra Pratap Singh. Okay. So NTPC Limited and GE Power India Limited, both of them have signed an MOU and this is basically a research kind of a, kind of an MOU wherein the GE Power Limited is going to do a feasibility study. Okay, whether we can Im install a, or develop sub certain technologies which can help NTPC's coal fired power plants go carbon free. Okay, so there can be some new and uh, renewable energy which we can use in the NTPC's plant. So all of these things are going to be researched upon by these two organizations. Okay, so what is the crux here? What do we need to remember? Just the names of these two companies, NTPC and GE Power India Limited and coal fired power plants. Bas. These are the three keywords, just remember them. Apart from this, you don't need to remember anything. Now coming to uh, the NTPC, it is India's largest power utility. Okay, uh, it plans to become a 130 gigawatt company by 2032. Now you can clearly see, currently the portfolio of this company stands at 70,000 megawatts, 70,000 something mega megawatts and it is planning to increase this portfolio to 130 gigawatts. So it is a really, I would say, magnanimous target that NTPC has set for itself for the coming decade. 
okay. Uh, then it was established in 1975, not a very relevant fact because nobody is going to ask you the year of establishment of NTPC until or unless the examiner is in the same frame of his mind. So NTPC aims to become the world's largest and best power major company. It is a Maharatna company in India and the CMD is Gurdeep Singh. Okay, so I wrongly said Krishnendra Pratap Singh, it is Gurdeep Singh. Sometimes the teacher can also make mistakes. I hope you understand. Okay. Okay. So my question from you is that NTPC is a Maharatna company. Do you know how many Maharatna companies are there in India? This is your question. Find it out and tell me. <coughs> question number eight. When was the high ambition coalition for nature and people created? So... The right answer is 2021. High ambition coalition for nature and power has basically announced that it is going to set up its permanent secretariat. Okay, I hope you are understanding this point that every kind of conference or uh, organization comes into validation once its secretariat is established because until or unless that happens, the work of that organization does not come into uh, reality okay for example this organization does not have its secretariat so at present it is not able to work effectively right as far as the case of g20 and g7 is concerned so the country which is hosting the presidency of those country those group grouping for a particular year handles the entire work of those uh, groupings okay so that country itself becomes the secretariat of these groupings and apart from g7 and g20 there is no I would say organization that is working without any secretariat or without any brick and mortar presence. Okay. So now this organization, which is basically a coalition, which is going to work for the nature and environment only. So it, it has announced that it is going to set up its permanent secretariat, which will be co-hosted by the world resource and resource institutes and the global environment facility. Okay. Now, this coalition has 116 countries and right now it is co-chaired by Co Costa Rica and France. And UK is the co-chair, okay? It's the ocean co-chair. So, UK is going to handle the work related to oceans, okay? <clears throat> the coalition was officially launched at the One Planet Summit in Paris in 2021. <clears throat> Next question is which IIT will establish the IIT Malaysia? So it is IIT Kharagpur. So it is, I would say, a prominent or a milestone that Indian Institute is achieving because for the recent or I would say from the modern history uh, time period only, India, India's position as the world world's education sector has produced, right? In the ancient history, we had the Nalanda University, we had the Takshashila University, we had many uh, universities and India was seen as a country of knowledge, as a center of knowledge. But with the course of time, that, uh, that uh, image of India got eroded. But now, now we are spreading our wings again and IIT Kharagpur is establishing the IIT Malaysia. Okay, so Indian Institute of Technology in Malaysia, how wonderful it is sounding. So that's the thing which is going to happen and it's a proud moment because now Indian Institute is going to teach or it, it is going to provide the facility for education and this is showing the tilt of India towards education or the uh, you can say value we attach to education. Okay, so uh, it is going to become worldwide by establishing its IIT Malaysia. And after this, we expect more and more IITs to spread its wings and at the same time also estab uh, uh, is the establishment of more colleges, more institutions should happen in India. Okay, coming back to the news, it will be a major step for the institute to set up its global footprint. Now, let's discuss some facts about Malaysia as well. So, the capital is Kuala Lumpur's uh, currency is ringgit. And Malaysia is a part of ASEAN and this entire thing is ASEAN. 
So, Malaysia you can clearly see it is located on two parts, one is the Malay Peninsula and here is the Borneo Island. So, on this Borneo Island we have three countries, Indonesia, Malaysia and Brunei. So, remember and uh, this countries are federal, constitutional, monarchy. So, these are three different words. Federal means it is a group of different states, units and constitution it basically means that this country is run by a constitution and it has a monarchy as well. That means the monarchy is bound by the constitution. So, that would be the kind of politi political structure that this country is having. Then the PM of Malaysia at present is Anwar Ibrahim. Okay, and he got elected very recently. So, this can probably become a question. Okay. Next question is National Stock Exchange of India received in principle approval from SEBI to set up a social stock exchange as a separate sector segment of the NSE. In October 2022, the Bombay Stock Exchange got the approval from SEBI to set up a social stock exchange uh, as a separate segment of the NSE. So, the social stock exchange will issue zero coupons, zero principal securities. What is the minimum issue size of securities in this exchange? So, here guys, one crore is the right answer. So, first let's, let's understand the news itself. So, what has happened that the National Stock Exchange of India is going to set up the social stock exchange as a segment of itself, okay. So, we have two different exchanges, Bombay Stock Exchange and National Stock Exchange working differently. But here, SEBI has given the approval to NSE to set up the social stock exchange as a part of itself, okay. That's one thing. And uh, here, it must be BSE, not NSE. In October 2022, Bombay Stock Exchange also got the approval to set up the social stock exchange as a part of its own organization, but it would be a different segment. Now, what is the meaning of this? So, the meaning is that now you can buy the securities of the social stock exchange from the BSE website. So, that would be the, I guess, uh, functionality of it, okay. The technicality of this would be uh, that from the BSE website or from the BSE, uh, we will be able to purchase the securities from the social stock exchange. Uh, as far as the information released by the SEBI is concerned, so this much has been released and uh, more information can only be availed when the social stock exchange become operational. Now, what is the social stock exchange? <coughs> so, guys, social stock exchange is basically a kind of, uh, you can say, market. I hope you already are aware of this social stock exchange concept and in case you are not aware of it, don't worry, I am going to tell you. So, social stock exchange is basically an exchange platform like we have the BSE and NSE. What do we do here? We buy the securities and give the money for the, those securities. But in social stock exchange, we will buy the securities and give the money. But in return, we would not get any interest. Thus, it would be a zero coupon security. And also, the principal amount which we have given to the company or here in this case, it would be an NGO. So, the principal amount is also not going to be returned. So, it is again a zero principal. So, zero coupon, zero principal. So, it is a donation, okay. So, if you are buying a security from the social stock exchange, do not expect anything in return. It is just a donation which you are giving to the NG, okay. I hope I am clear. Now, the max, uh, not the maximum, sorry, minimum issue size of a security can be 1 crore, okay, on this exchange. And the minimum application size is rupees 2 lakh. So, this is the numericals involved in this social stock exchange. So, do remember. Now, here we have read about the recent news. There is again one more news related to the social stock exchange. So, let us look at that. So, SEBI <coughs> has recently restructured its two advisory committees. First is of the Foreign Portfolio Investors Advisory Committee and second one is the Social Stock Exchange Advisory Committee. So, the chair of the FPI advisory committee is Hasmukh Adhya, who was the former finance secretary and 16 members are there in this committee. <coughs> and the chair of the social stock exchange is 18, sorry, uh, the chairperson is R. Bala Subramanyam 
and total 18 members are there in this social stock exchange committee and now we have just read the social stock exchange news so please remember the chairperson of the committee of sebi and who is this person so she is the uh, current chairperson of sebi madhavi puri but uh, okay so here we have something more on the social stock exchange and that is that in the budget of 2019 to 20 the idea of social stock exchange was introduced and in july 2022 the sebi introduced the social exchange sorry social stock exchange framework and uh, now the ssc will be established as a separate segment of the bsc as well as a uh, as well as the nsc okay okay so question number 11 is the ministry of mine has approved the purchase of two new surveyor ships which will replace the aging rv samudra uh, shodhikam shodhikam and rv samudra kostum and conduct marine survey for the geological survey of india from which country were the rv samudra shodhikam and rv samudra kostum procured so netherland is the right answer now what is the news the news is that there were two surveyor ships and these two surveyor ships are aging now okay they have become old so they need replacement now which uh, ships uh, will replace these existing ships it is not clear because they have not been procured once they will be procured they will be renamed okay like these surveyor ships have been renamed so right now what is the information the information is about the old or you can say the existing surveyor ships with the ministry of mines and these ships are these okay so samudra shodhikam and samudra kostu now what are the surveyor ships these ships are used to survey the presence of the mines and minerals basically on the ocean bed okay so these two ships were uh, built in netherlands and it were uh, procured in 1984 they were commissioned in 1984 so here is the mind map of the landscape okay the main land india you can have a look at it <coughs> which iits have collaborated with delhi government for the real time source apportion apportionment project so <coughs> the right answer is option d iit kanpur and iit delhi now guys what is this apportionment project so the real time apportionment project is basically assessing the involvement or you can say the presence of different particles and substances in the air so basically this project checks the air quality and how does it check it by assessing the presence of different materials in the air and what kind of materials dust sand or the sulfur oxide or different kinds of things which are there in the composition of air next question is what is the name of india's first tactical quasi ballistic missile so pralay is the name and i hope you are aware of uh, the meaning of pralay pralay is basically the disaster or apocalypse kind of a thing so that's the deadly uh, name which we have given to this first quasi ballistic missile and this missile in itself is very deadly okay let me tell you why first of all the ballistic missiles i hope you are aware that they follow a long trajectory once they are shooted from the surface of earth they enter into space and then they go to their target areas okay but this missile is the short range missile so it is not going to leave the atmosphere it is going to be in the atmosphere and it will be a surface to surface missile and it will be very hard to intercept this short range ballistic missile okay and that is why this is named as prale and it is india's first tactical quasi ballistic missile okay now what is the meaning of tactical tactical means it can be maneuvered it can change its path or you can say it is navigable okay so once it is shot we can also maneuver the path of the missile apart from this there is high accuracy as well in this missile it is going to hit the target at the pinpoint accuracy and it is capable of carrying 350 to 700 kgs of deadly warheads okay 
and uh, the project of Trale was sanctioned in 2050 and it is basically an extension of the Prahar missile program which was first tested in 2012 okay and it is a short range ballistic missile un unlike the intercontinental ballistic missiles it does not leave the environment so that is what written here and I don't know should I express my happiness over the empowerment of the Indian military or should I be sad for the kind of destruction that the humanity is is hellbent on doing so let it be let's just focus on the current affairs which uh, which is the work here okay which is our responsibility now as far as the current affairs or the general awareness is concerned so you need to remember this thing that india is planning to create its rocket force okay so this rocket force is going to be the uh, you can say a force or the artillery where we will have more and more very uh, you can say high quality uh, missiles and rockets okay <coughs> so first of all this idea was emphasized by our late cds uh, general bipin rawat who was also the first cds of india okay uh, and uh, this rocket force is going to include Brahmos, Smirk and Pinaka multi-barrel missile launchers along with this Prale missile now. So guys, this is our late CDS Bipin Rawat and this is our current CDS Anil Chauhan. The next question is what will be the growth rate of India over the next five years according to the Center for Economics and Business Research. So here 6.4% would be India's growth rate over the next five years. And according to the organization, India is going to become the third economic super power by 2037. Uh, I guess it is 20, uh, yeah, and a $10 economy by $10 trillion economy by 2035, okay. The annual rate of India's GDP would be 6.4% over the next five years. And I hope you are aware that at present India is the fifth largest economy. We have surpassed UK. The annual rate of India's GDP growth will be 6.5% on average in the subsequent nine years. Okay. And this growth trajectory will help India in becoming uh, or basically will push India's rank from the fifth place to the third place by 2030. Okay, so by 2037, probably we would be just behind China and US. So that's a very, <clears throat> I would say, good growth trajectory that India is following right now. Okay, so the next question is which country is terminating visa free entry? for Indians from January 1st, 2023. So here Serbia is the right answer. Now guys, this much is only enough that Serbia is going to restrict the visa free entry for Indians from January 1st, 2023. Apart from this, everything written here is just for your general awareness. If you are not able to understand it or not able to retain it, just leave all those facts, okay? You just need to remember that Serbia is the country. The name of the country is the key here. Just remember that. Okay. So here you can see this is Serbia and uh, this is your Balkan Peninsula. I hope you know that what is a peninsula. The peninsula is the, la the mass of land which is surrounded by water from three sides. So here is the water, here is the water and here is the water. So once it, these countries were part of a larger nation which is the Yugoslavia nation and after its breakdown these countries emerged from that Yugoslavia okay so Belgrade is the capital of Serbia <coughs> <coughs> next question is which company has been certified as the great place to work by the great place to work institute for 2023 and this would be the sixth consecutive year for that company so it is guys Tata Steel. Okay. Which company launched a unique health insurance product called the uh, Respect Senior Care Rider? So it is Bajaj Alliance General Insurance. Okay. So it is this Respect Senior Care Rider, which is a health care insurance pro uh, product by the Bajaj Alliance General Insurance. And it offers different kinds of services 
to the senior citizens that is enough from the exam perspective how much is the outlay of hcl's aquapreneur that is global fresh water innovation challenge initiative so dollar 15 million is the right answer so first of all know this fact that the hcl corporation and world economic forum both of them have collaborated to launch the aquapreneur initiative in may 2022 so in 2022 only this initiative was launched now what is this initiative as you can clearly see from the name itself global fresh water innovation challenge initiative so obviously the companies or the innovators would be invited into this challenge so that they can innovate uh, technologies for ensuring that uh, the fresh water whichever uh, whatever uh, percentage of fresh water is there on earth can be maintained for a longer period of time okay so dollar 15 million is the outlay of that entire initiative okay so hcl corporation is going to fund this entire amount and apart from this it has partnered with uplink and uh, this uh, uplink is the innovation platform of the world economic forum and this uplink is basically the implementation partner of this aquapreneur initiative along with this hcl corporation and uh, since i have told you that the entire amount is being given by the hcl corporation so it is basically a pioneer or you can say uh, this uh, hcl corporation is going to head this initiative in that sense because it is providing the funding so it has this initiative has gauged the interest of the startups and because of this it was in the news so the news was this much only that uh, many startups from india from asian countries from african countries are interested in this aquapreneur water challenge okay <clears throat> next uh, question is who has been appointed as a chairman of the national highways authority of india so santosh kumar yadav is the right answer okay so national highway authority of india was constituted by an act of parliament that is national highway authority of india act of 1988 thus it is a statutory body alka upadhyay is the current chairperson of this organization who is the ceo ceo and chairman of the railway board so anil kumar lahoti is the right answer which iit has launched the lotus indo european project so here iit guwahati and iit bombay are the right answer so what is this lotus indo european project so basically this lotus indo european project is the project for ensuring the quality of drinking water and water in india okay so european union european commission is partnering with the department of science and technology for this project and under this project they are basically going to use the sensors water quality sensors to check the quality of water which is being supplied to the households in india okay so these sensors will be developed uh, in collaboration with iit guwahati iit bombay and there is one more institution uh, which is the university gustav eiffel uh, and uh, sme egm sofia antipolis from france uh, these two can uh, these three institutions and iit guwahati these three institutions are going to develop the lotus water quality sensors okay so that's the crux of it i hope you have got it next question is when was the assistance to botanical garden scheme launched so it was launched in 1992 now why is it in the news so let me tell you the news first then we will go into the background otherwise it gets a little bit confusing i i guess so the news is that this scheme is not working properly despite spending a huge amount on the scheme we are not seeing the results okay so that's the that's the news now the controller and auditor general of india has released its report and in that report it was mentioned that this scheme has become ineffective okay now let's discuss the background so the background is that the ministry of environment forest and climate change has been implementing this assistance to botanical garden scheme since 1992 okay what's the purpose the purpose is the ex situ conservation of endemic and threatened species of plants in the network of botanic garden 
what is xc2 conservation i hope you must have heard of it in your school life xc2 and in situ conservation are two types of conservation xc2 conservation conservation is when we uh, take the animal or the plant from its natural habitat and provide a simulated habitat to that plant or animal and in situ conservation is the national parks or the wildlife uh, sanctuaries if you want to take an example of it so there the conservation of the animal or the plants are uh, is done in the location where they are naturally residing okay so that's the basic difference so here what the ministry does it basically takes the endemic species of plants and puts it into the botanical gardens which are developed and sponsored under this particular scheme so in those botanical gardens those endemic species are grown okay now botanical survey of india was uh, given the responsibility of implementing this scheme and uh, right now we are witnessing that after spending approximately 50 crore rupees on this scheme since its launch okay we have not seen the results okay so this scheme was not able to reap any benefits that's the scheme and the news i hope you are able to understand it and you will able to remember it so here two facts related to botanical survey of india that is the headquarter in kolkata and the director is ashish ho asoi mao so a a mao that much is enough the national mission for clean ganga has approved 12 projects worth rupees 2700 crores for developing sewerage infrastructure in the ganga basin when was the national mission for ganga registered as a society <clears throat> so here guys 2011 is the right answer so this statement that 12 projects have been approved uh, which are worth 2700 crores is not that significant okay because uh, you may see that in the coming months more projects will be approved okay but until or unless that happens this is a little bit important okay because directly a question can be framed out of it that recently the national mission for ganga clean ganga approved 12 projects which were uh, worth dash so the amount can be asked or the purpose of these projects can be asked that is to develop the sewerage infrastructure or the number of projects can be asked okay so pay attention to them now the ganga basin is spread across uttar pradesh bihar jharkhand and west bengal so here the sewerage infrastructure will be developed now as far as the national mission for clean ganga is concerned so it was registered as a society in 2011 okay which means that it does not have any kind of statutory powers okay <coughs> or <coughs> regulatory supervisory or legal powers would, would not be there with the national mission for clean ganga okay it is kind of a society or an ngo which works for this cause of cleaning this river <coughs> <coughs> so this national mission for clean ganga was a part of the national ganga council and the national ganga council was created under the environment protection act of 1986 and none of these informations are for your memorization okay you don't need to memorize these facts it is just for your information that uh, there is a society's registration act of 1860 under which the this society this uh, organization is registered now we have the national ganga council which is chaired by the prime minister of india and empowered task force on river ganga under the chairmanship of the jal shakti minister which is gajendra uh, shikhawat next question is which of the following universities has collaborated with india for the g and b1 encephal encephalopathy disease so here tel aviv university and columbia university is the right answer so option d is the right answer now what is first of all g and b1 encephalopathy disease okay so guys this is the disease 
or you can say the mutation of this G and B1 protein in the fetus stage leads to epilepsy in people. Okay, jo mirgi ka dohra logo ko padta hai. So that mirgi or epilepsy is caused because of the mutation within uh, within the stomach or in the fetus stage only, and that mutation happens in this G and B1 protein. Okay, so that's the basic thing. Now the universities are working on this uh, mutation and they are trying to develop a drug to treat this disease okay now not only epile epilepsy but uh, the gnb1 mutation is also responsible for the slowed connection between the between the mind and the body okay so iit madras tel aviv university and columbia university are studying this genetic brain disease called gnb1 encep uh, encep uh, encephalopathy okay so at present we have less than 100 documented cases of this disease worldwide but still it is very important to focus on okay now mirgi ka dora bahut logo ko padta hai but this particular disease is uh, very less documented and the cause of epilepsy is the mutation in the gnb1 protein okay and that mutation is also responsible for this particular disease okay so it is a neuro neurological disorder which affects individuals in the fetus stage. <coughs> so in this, a single uh, mutation happens in this GNB1 gene uh, that makes the G proteins and the G protein is called the G1 protein and this is again not important for memorization just for the general awareness this mutation affects the patients in the fetus stage only and it uh, hampers the mental and physical coordination and development of the patient okay so the research is supported by the indo israel binational grant uh, which is offered by the in israel science foundation and India's Universities Grants Commission with which company has a tutor Hyperloop signed a memorandum of agreement at IIT Madras to jointly work on development and deployment of Hyperloop technology at scale. So Tata Steel is the right answer guys. Okay, so Tata Steel, Tutor Hyperloop and IIT Madras. These three have come in collaboration to develop the Hyperloop technology in India. Who had SEBI's high powered steering committee on cyber security? So here Naveen Kumar Singh is the right answer. So recently SEBI has changed the composition of its two committees. First is the committee on cyber security and another one is the information system security. Okay. So the committee on cyber security is chaired by Naveen Kumar Singh and it has now eight members. So two members have been added. First member is the G Padmanabhan who was the executive director of RBI and another one is Sushil Kumar Nehra. Okay. The next question is what is the total strength of SEBI's information system security committee? So here seven is the right answer. So the composition of this committee is total seven members and chair is Krishna Murthy, professor. Where is the Bandipur National, uh, National Park located? So Karnataka is the right answer. Who has been named as a CEO of SSAI, FSSAI, that is Food Safety Standards Authority of India. So here Ganji Kamala Rao, Kamala V Rao is the right answer. When is the International Day of Epidemic Preparedness observed? So December 11 is the right answer. Okay, sorry, it's December 27. So December 27 is the right answer. So here guys, the content of the video ends. I hope you all have enjoyed the content. And if in case you have any kind of feedbacks to give, you can provide it on this number. This is our WhatsApp number as well, okay? And the PDF of this session is already there on the Telegram channel. So go download the PDF, try to revise the content and a very happy new year to all of you again.